the latter house, we call our grounds place of refuge. We are located on the premier hotel hill, Mokola Ibadan. We meet every Sunday, usually for two services. The first service starts at 8 a.m. and the second at 10 a.m. But currently, we only run the 10 a.m. service due to the exigencies of the times. On Wednesdays, we meet for prevailing prayers and Bible study at 5.30 p.m. You're welcome to join us in these programs. The word of the Lord to us this year is from 2 Corinthians 1.20. It says, For all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, Amen. To the glory of God through us. NKJV. Welcome again to the latter house and to our year of yes and amen. Good morning to you this morning. We are right with us both online and face to face. It's a pleasure to welcome you to our public service for August 2020. This is a year that the Lord has promised that his, that his promises in our lives will be years and amen. But before we commit, before we commit this service, I'd like to tell us the new and our new position on face mask. The wearing of face mask now covers every ground of our premises of this facility. So that means that we may interpret to say from the car park to the to the fence to the conveniences in every in every part on every part of this portion of the house. So, well, after service, the moment you want to remove your face mask, it means you want to begin to depart go home. So, let us be careful, and the face mask must cover your nostrils and your mouth together. A face shield is not enough. Your face shield is not complete without the nose mask. The Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. So, it's my time, it's, it's my pleasure again to welcome us to this wonderful service, and I can assure you God is here to bless you, and we will bless you indeed. It's time for the prevailing prayers, and I welcome my sister this morning. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful morning. It happens to be the first Sunday in the month of August. So I just want to take a moment to appreciate God and thank for all he has done and how far he has brought us. So let's rise and just say a word of appreciation from the bottom of your heart and thank this God, this awesome God who has been good to you, who has been kind to you. Father Lord, I worship you. I thank you so much, Father. This is a new day. It's a day that you have made and we rejoice in it. Thank you, Lord, for how far you have brought us, Lord. Thank you, Father, for keeping us. Thank you, Father, for the storms that have passed under the bridge. Thank you, Father, because we have come out victorious. We appreciate you, Jehovah. We Blessed be your holy name, God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Okay, so we have about nine prayer requests this morning, but because for want of time, I have grouped them. The first one is asking for grace and mercy and God's help for the children of, our, of some of our sisters. And they're asking that the Lord will prosper them and that their labor will not be in vain. And that the Lord should be with them in all that they do and in all their ways. So let's lift our voice to the Lord and commit these children unto God's hands. The Bible says that children are a gift from God. And you know, He has blessed when He blesses us with children, they are blessings. They shouldn't bring any form of sorrow. And if a woman's heart is not happy with how her children are going, I'm sure there's no way that her job will be full. So let's just commit these children into God's hands and ask that the Lord will open heavens upon them. And let's ask that the Lord will extend His hand. Of, of grace upon their lives, upon all their endeavors in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, watch over these children, order their steps, bless them in all their ways, Lord. Keep them, comfort them, Lord, so that their mother's joy can be full in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Father. This children, she will not mourn, she will not weep, she will not sorrow over them in the name of Jesus. They will continually bring this mother's joy and peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you peace. The second one, um, for for uh, uh, our sister, so she's asking that the Lord will grant safe delivery for one of our children who is pregnant. So let's lift up this daughter of Zion unto the Lord and ask that when the time comes, in this season, she will bring forth her child in safety. There will not be any issues. There will not be any any. Um, 
calamity, there will not be any complications whatsoever. The child will come for me in, in sound health. The mother will be safe. The baby will be safe in the name of Jesus. Anyone who, who the devil wants to use as a form of or to deviate what God has said for this child, the Lord will not make it come to work on that day. Lord Almighty, your place will be upon her. Like the Hebrew women, God for their children, Lord. Lord Almighty, this one will bring forth her child in just in, in the name of Jesus. And we will have cause to celebrate, Lord. The child will be perfect. The mother will be well. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The second group is on finances. And, well, it's in two parts. Um, one is asking for financial breakthrough. And then the second part is that the Lord will bless the work of their hands. That businesses, they've had businesses. And that the Lord will enlarge and the Lord will prosper the businesses. So let's ask, let's lift up these businesses onto the Lord's hand, into the Lord's hands. The Lord said that he will, he will bless the work of our hands. That's his promise to us. So let's ask that the Lord will open heavens upon these businesses. He will enlarge their course. He will extend their businesses to the ends of the earth. People will know them. They will come them. They, they'll be... They'll be tossing for their attention for their business in the name of Jesus. Let's just ask that the Lord will bless them indeed and bless the work of their hands in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be no issues and even if issues come, the Lord will provide solution in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we thank you, Father, Lord, for these businesses. Thank you, Father, because they prosper. Thank you, Father, Lord, because they are enlarged. Thank you, Father, Lord, because they, they will all that they require, all the resources that they need to keep the business to thrive. Father, Lord, you will provide in the name of Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, because we'll have testimonies concerning these businesses in the name of Jesus. Then the next one, there's a request for a life partner. And that you know, our brother is asking that the Lord will bring his partner his way. So let's ask that the Lord will bring his partner his way, the bone of his bone. The flesh of his flesh. When God created man, he said it is not good for man to be alone and that I will create for him a help meet. Let's ask that the Lord will bring his help meet to him in the name of Jesus. Let's ask that the Lord will, will cause that path to cross. That he will be sensitive in the name of Jesus. You know, the Bible says that he will find it. It's a good thing and obtains favor in the sight of the Lord. So let's ask that the Lord will bring his own path. That he will obtain favor in the sight of the Lord. Lord Almighty, we thank you for this one. He desires to have a partner. And that is one of the instructions that you've given unto us. He said we should go into the world and, and multiply. How can we multiply if we do not have partners? Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Father, that you will cause his path come to him, Lord. The bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, all that he says, Father Lord, let that person, wherever she is on the face of the earth, cause her, cause their path to cross in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you. The next one is, well, the second part of that is not for the same person, but this sister, well, um, I don't know, a brethren, is asking that the Lord will perfect that which he has started in her home or his home. So let's just commit the, the, the home, that home into the hand of the Lord, that that which he has started, he will complete in the mighty name of Jesus. He will, he will bring peace, he will bring joy, he will bring fulfillment to that home in the name of Jesus. Every wall, every power that is that used to be at work, the Lord will, will continue to make it, you know, uh, will, will derail it in the name of Jesus. He will sweep it out of the way in the name of Jesus. They will suffer no more no heartache. They will suffer no sorrow again in the name of Jesus. He will make them to be compatible. He will make them to be friends of each other in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we thank you. We speak peace to that home, Lord. We know your peace is there. And we ask that Father is to continue in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, thank you, Father, because this is a testimony. I will continue to testify on your goodness, Father, Lord, concerning that home in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The next one is perfect health. So different people ask for this. I think somebody right now is under the weather. So she's, she, he or she is asking for sound health. And then also sound health for every member of their family. So let's leave up for them. This brethren is also Lord's hand and ask that he will cause his healing to come upon them. That from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, they will experience the healing, the healing, the healing power of God. It will flow through their veins in the name of Jesus. Let's ask, because the Bible says that she, um, health, um, health or 
is the bread of the children. Sound health. The Lord will cause them to enjoy sound health from this day onward in the name of Jesus. We have covenants of protection. We have a covenant of life. Anything that will cause there to be in the romance of this covenant in the lives of this one's Lord will come against them in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, thank you, Father. And help us from today onwards, Lord. That their body is sound. Their body is perfect. Every organ, every system, every vein, every through very through the body works for the purpose for which you have created them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious reading. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Um, the next one is asking for a direction that our brethren's step should be ordered by God. Um, he or she is asking that the next step, apparently, this is a step where she's somewhere now or he's somewhere now and she's about to take. A decision and she wants that step to be ordered by God. You know, Psalm 37 20 talks about God. Um, that you know, God ordered the steps of a good man. So let's ask that the Lord will teach this person the way to go. Let's ask that the Lord will order his steps. The word of the Lord, like we said before, says that the steps of the righteous shall be ordered by God. Lord Almighty, we ask for that, that that decision that that, that brethren wants to take, Lord, you will, you will, it will be from a way divine one, from you, from on high, in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, she will not take the wrong step, Lord. She will not do anything that is not in your will for her life, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, thank you, Father, and Lord, will teach her the way to go. All that she requires, the wisdom, the intelligence, the knowledge, the understanding, Lord, you will grant unto her, Father, Lord, in the, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let her not work out of your will her life in Jesus mighty name. Eternal work of ages we bless you, we exalt you, we magnify your name. Thank you Lord Almighty for this request that we have raised unto you Lord. We are sure Father Lord that you will answer speedily. Thank you Father Lord for testimonies Lord. We bless your holy name for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen.
of my life I want to gaze upon your beauty Seek you in this holy place
runs into it and their safety is sure hallelujah can we be seated coming next God, hallelujah. It is the first Sunday in the month of August, and I assure you it's going to be a wonderful month for you and your household, and for me and my entire household. Just relax in the hand of God, it shall be well. 
we would like to welcome you to the latter house glory be to god we also welcome those watching us online we are glad you could join us the word of god to us this month is from the book of isaiah chapter 45 verses 22 and 23 look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth for i am god and there is none else i have sworn by myself the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow every tongue shall swear our doors are now open for services so you are welcome back it is even more imperative now that we must maintain social distancing and obey all Nigeria Center for Disease Control regulations. You will need to wear a clean face mask throughout everywhere in the premises and sanitize your hands before entry to the auditoriums. We have zero tolerance for defaulters. Our next service will be our prevailing prayers and Bible study this Wednesday, August 5th at 5.30 p.m. Nigeria time. It will be both face-to-face -face and online. Our Facebook page is www.facebook.com slash TLH expression. Give your written prayer request to the ushers before start of service or send ahead by email to pastor at the latter house dot org worship sunday next sunday august 9th will be worship sunday in the house it promises to be awesome prepare to give the lord best worship ever it is time to give our tithes and offerings bank transfer details are on the screen the account is guaranteed trust bank account number 0448623828 again 0448623282 let us pray heavenly father god of all grace bless our sacrifice of love to you as we give now and send your blessings to all areas of our lives and to our land where we need your heavenly intervention at this time in jesus name amen we congratulate and celebrate everyone whose birthdays and wedding anniversaries fall within this week we congratulate and celebrate especially our trusty and pastor brother Aki Olushui who is 70 today all of you wherever you are stand to your feet and take a bow the cloud of witnesses in heaven join us to applaud you hallelujah may the lord bless your new beginning in jesus name amen well, thank you for worshiping with us today, especially if this is your first time. If you are in any of the auditoriums, please identify yourself to an usher so you can you. Well, bless God that you made it and look forward to you joining us again on Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Nigeria time. Until then and beyond, may the Lord bless and keep you. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. What I said is hallelujah. 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 What a great day it is. 70 years of a man's pilgrimage. It's our trustee. It's our pastor. It's our brother. And it's our friend. And I welcome with you together. My brother, my friend, Aki. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Congratulations, sir. Sister Shea. 
Come and give a brother a birthday gift, a card, as a paper. As a token of our love, everybody has signed it. Hallelujah. And brother, from your brother in the latter house, it's a token of love also. Yeah. Now, people will be celebrating shortly after. Huh? Like we said, disease control instructions will be followed. For dancing, we will dance. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know that kind of dance? You remember that dance? In that event center, I forgot it. Yeah, I can never forget. Happy University Wait, wait, just, just, just wait, wait, wait. It's coming. God bless you, brother. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from the storm and my land. My help comes from the Lord, the Lord who stands at the night. He says He will not suffer my foes. My food to be brought. The Lord is here and me. He will not stop and not sleep. For the Lord is my keep and the Lord is my strength. Upon my land. Upon my land. together this morning God's word from Isaiah in chapter 45 Isaiah in chapter 45 we'll be reading from verse 18 we'll read right through to the end of the chapter Isaiah in chapter 45 from verse 18 
This is the word of the Lord. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He has established it, he created it, not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret, in the dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek me, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, seek righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Verse 22. That's the word of the Lord to us this morning, 22 and 23. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say in the Lord, have I righteousness and strength, even to him shall men come. And all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Dear Father, we thank you for the opportunity on this wonderful day, the second day of August 2020, to come into your holy presence, to celebrate your Lordship of our lives, to rejoice that you gave unto us your Son, the Lord Jesus himself, and also your son, Akindola Neolushi, you've been so gracious unto us. We benefited from our relationship with the Lord Jesus as we have benefited from our relationship with your son, Akindola Neolushi. Whether that this morning, as we celebrate the Lordship of Jesus, not only in our lives and also in his own life, that will add on to us, that will speak clearly unto us, our Father. You are the Father of all lights. You are the God of heaven, the possessor of the heavens and the earth, the creator of all things. You made us, you molded us. Please speak unto us this morning, so that our understanding will be fruitful, and let our lives be better for it. Thank you for a great and wonderful time in your presence. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to welcome you to August 2020. I'm sweating like a Christmas goat. Because you know, you know me, I, I'm not used to this, your, this, your, you know, wearing suit and all of those things. It's not my, it's not my thing. I only do it because I have to do it. I'm not like you, who like, like a banker. Me, I'm an architect. We wear shorts, we wear short sleeves. There we go. Well, anyway, we have to do this, you know. We have to be formal, so we are formal. I was saying, I'm, I'm welcoming you to August, but have you noticed how fast this year is? Even the young people are saying it is fast. When was it that we were celebrating Passover? Even Easter. It looks like a few, a few days ago. The fastest year ever in my own life. I want a month for us also, like I said in my prayers, you know, celebrating unto the Lordship of Jesus this morning, but also the seventh bed of our friends. So let me tell you something, and it's a, it's a word of prophecy unto you. You can claim it, you can refuse it. As you dance, Today with us. As you dance today with us, you will have a personal reason to dance all month long and beyond it. As you dance today with us, as you dance today with us, you will have a personal reason to dance all month long and beyond it. Welcome to a refreshing season of celebrations in the precious name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord towards this month is what I just read to you in Isaiah 20, 45, 22, and 23. Look unto me, and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. 
I've sworn by myself the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness. I shall not return and unto me. Unto me, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall swear. Swear allegiance. Swear an allegiance of oath. That's what that, that swear means. This morning I want to speak very briefly, hopefully, on the power of your gaze. The power of your gaze. G-A-Z-E. -E. The power of your gaze. In other words, the choice of where you look. The power behind that choice. You know, you have absolute power over what you choose to look at. Your decision. This morning, as I'm speaking, you can choose to ignore me and look elsewhere. God has given each man a free moral agency to do what he pleases so long as on this side of eternity. You can choose to look anywhere you like. The power of your gaze is entirely in your control. I will exercise it. You know, the Amplified Version of that verse says, in verse 22, it says, Turn to me and be saved. Turn. You know, the, in James it says, look up to me. Look to me. Amplified says, turn to me. You, you can choose where you turn your gaze. Many people are here this morning, even watching online, even in your own house, you are distracted because you are full. You no know, one was up message has come, and you are distracted. You can choose what to look at. You can choose where you turn. It says, turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. I have sworn an oath by myself. The word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. That to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. For now, you can choose where you please to look. The world to turn your attention. Like I said, there's a free moral agency, but it's not for all times. There's no problem in time when every knee will bow and every tongue will swear allegiance to the Lord. It's either you bow your knees or your knees will be bowed or bent. It's always better to do it yourself than let somebody else do it. You know, like Nigerian SARS, you have to bow it, bend your knee for you. No other to be. Most times, however, the natural man chooses to unleash off his gaze in the wrong direction. In the wrong direction. He chooses by himself to look in the wrong direction. That's I want you to go with me this morning to Proverbs in chapter 2. Proverbs in chapter 2. I want to read just a few verses there. Proverbs in chapter 2. Proverbs 2, I want to read from verse 10. Proverbs in chapter 2, I want to read from verse 10. My says, When wisdom entereth into thy heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, notice two conditions. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, it says in verse 11, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. When you allow wisdom and knowledge, then discretion, the ability to rightly know where to look, to be discretionary, will preserve you. Understanding because now you know better because of wisdom, because of knowledge, understanding will keep you. Keep is keep. We ensure you are not lost for anything. Verse 12 says, The reason discretion and understanding will do this, that it will deliver you from the way of the evil man. There's an evil man out there who will deliver you from his ways. He will deliver you from the man that speaks forward things. Forward means you know, someone who's who speaks twisted perverse things. Number four, that thing, it says, you, you won't leave the path of openness. They have left that path. To walk in the ways of darkness. Discretion will deliver you from them. 
verse 14. He says, Who rejoice to do evil? They rejoice at evil and delight in the forwardness, in the perverseness of the wicked. They delight in it. Whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths to deliver them from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattered with her words. Discretion will deliver you from him. Understanding will deliver you from her. The evil man and the strange woman. Because you can choose to look at anyone. But brother, if you look at a strange woman, look at what will happen next. He says, which the strange woman forsakes the guide of her youth. You will not. And forget the covenant of our God. You will not. You are just looking. For her house inclines unto death. And her paths unto death, unto the dead. You didn't know that the house you are entering is called a sepulchre. Look at verse 19. That's where we stop. Know that go unto her. Return again. Neither take the hold of the paths of life. Once you go, you know it starts by looking. You look, you turn your gaze to, to the strange woman, you turn away from God, you choose your by free moral agency to look at where you want to look, the fatal consequences is that you can never return. If you will exercise discretion, if you will exercise understanding and choose to unleash the power of your gaze appropriately, then you must avoid distraction. Distractions are all around. You must avoid them. You must focus your gaze on God, my friend. You must make God the object of your focus. It's a self thing. You do it by yourself. You will yourself to do it. Because you can choose to unleash the power of your gaze anywhere you like. You can choose to look at God. You know, many of us blame occurrences. We blame contrary occurrences. My friend, Circumstances do not determine your life. Your poor choices do. Don't blame circumstances for your poor choices. Things may not always meet your expectations. They may not go according to your scripts. But the word of God in Romans chapter 8 verse 28, you know it. Romans 8 28, it says, All things work together for God for good. For those who love the Lord. Those who choose to look at God and to those who are called according to the purpose of God. You don't go the way of sinners and be according to the purpose of God. You don't go to a strange woman and be according to the purpose of God. Discretion, understanding will restrain you from doing that. Let me tell you, the same sun that shines and melts wax shines and hardens clay. You put your hair pomade where there's sun before you come back from church. It's liquid. That same sun on clay hardens seeds. It. The same occurrence. So the same thing that happened to you and the brother next to you, and different reactions will come out from it. Let me tell you, God is everywhere you look. In whatever station of life you find yourself, choose to see God in it. This demand is from God. It's more. He says, look up to me. Choose to see God in whatever you find yourself. In any circumstance of life you find yourself. There are five areas I want to talk very quickly. Where you must locate God as you unleash the power of your gaze. Number one, looking back. You must look back. You must look back. Looking back shows you where you are. The man who is 70 must be looking back to. The wife looks back. You know why? The wife, look, the wife looks back because he does not want to fall again. You know, the best will tell you, when a young boy falls, he's looking forward. When an elderly person falls, he's looking at what tripped him. Why? So he does not allow such things. He has tripped him. He has fallen. He's looking back because never again will he trip with such things. You understand me? 
That is the way, that's why he looks back. You remember where you are coming from when you look back. You remember that you are a sinner saved by grace when you look back. The victory won for you on the cross of Calvary is what becomes your portion when you look back. You know that Jesus extended life to you even when you are a sinner. He extended life to you. He made you part of the seed of Abraham. So when you look back, you remember Calvary. Remember the sacrifice he made for you on the cross. And you are grateful to him because of that. That's why you look back. You look back because you know that you are once condemned to eternal damnation. With no hope, eternal is separated from God. But now you are the apple of God's eyes. You cannot remember unless you look back. <laughs> when you look back sufficiently, you will begin to appreciate the relationship that brought you to where you are today. The relationship that God foisted with you where you are and brought you to where you are today. Therefore, you will never turn. You will never dare to turn to go back. Like the pig back to his fire. Remember the prodigal son? Every step the prodigal son took away from home, the light was behind him. The house of God is a house of light. When you depart from God, you begin to walk into your own shadows. And the unfortunate thing about shadow is that when the light is behind you and you are walking away from the light, the shadow is larger with every step you take. That's what happened to the prodigal son. Until he went into darkness. It was one step after the other. Let me tell you, the slide into it, the damnation is in, in one step after the other. Looking back will remind you of how far you have come, but of how easy it is to miss it again. You know, in, the way in which we travel is the wilderness. And there are storms in the wilderness. The storms in the wilderness will blot out the, the, the footprints, the markers. So if you are not careful, you can't find your way. There's constant sandstorm in the wilderness. That's why you need to remember that when Elijah was going, and Elijah asked from Elijah that he should give him a little portion of the anointing, he said to Elijah, You can see me when I'm going. <laughs> you have what you have asked. And in the, in the chariot of fire that came to carry, you, know, you need to know about how the cyclone is in the, in, in, in the desert place. It, it was blowing a lot of sand. But Elisha opened his eyes. He opened his eyes. Why? He must see Elijah go. When you look back, you will locate God. When you look back, you will locate God. The mantle remained a souvenir in the hand of Elisha until he unfolded it and smote the waters of Jordan. When you look back, you will appreciate the mantle you carry. Don't make it a souvenir. The power of God is in your hand. It's with you. It's within you. Don't fold the mantle. Use it. It's only when you look back at the cross of Calvary that you appreciate the mantle in your hand. Elisha may never have used the mantle, but he chose to use it. Why? He got to the river back of Jordan. And he said, Smooth the waters. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the Bible says, The waters to do. If you use the mantle, same thing will happen in your life. Looking back. Number two, look inward. Looking inward. You will look inward also when you look inward. It tells you who you are. It's a look of introspection. See yourself as you truly are. Let me tell you the truth. Nobody knows who you are. We think we do. But we don't. Nobody really knows who you are, but who you are. You know who you are. In me, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's Paul. Examining yourself is what you do when you look inwards. First Corinthians in chapter 11 and verse 28. First Corinthians in chapter 11 and verse 28. We'll be particularly lost table in a short time. You know, that 
chapter 1 says, But let every man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Let every man examine himself. Let every man look inward. Introspection. If you unleash the power of your gaze, looking inwards, you will see the mirror of God reflecting who you really are to yourself. The mirror of God is inside you. When you look inwards, you see yourself for who you really are. And when you see yourself, my brother and my sister, the chances are you, you may be shocked at what you are capable of. What you are capable. God judges the intents and thoughts of the heart of man. Man lives in self-deceit most of the time. Self-piety. Apply a different standard to others as they apply different from what they apply to themselves. Let me show you a typical example in the Bible. Second Samuel chapter 11. Second Samuel chapter 11. Particularly, I will be reading from verse 1 to 4. Then I will go to verse 12. Chapter 12. Chapter 11, 1 to 4. On page 482. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servant with him, and all Israel, and he destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. For David turned still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evil side that David arose off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If you don't behold, you don't see. Verse, verse 3. And David sang and inquired after the woman. That's the second Wahala. He saw what he should have seen. Then he went to inquire which he should have done. And one said, It's not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him and lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house. Look at verse 1 of chapter 12. You know the story when I. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. This for David is like a parable. This same David was listening to the prophet talk to him. There were two men in one city. The one was rich, the other was poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing. Say one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. He did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup. And lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man. And he's prepared to take up his own flock and his own hair to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him. But took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. <laughs> David had, look at verse 5. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing, that surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. At, at, at up to this point, David never thought about what he did to Uriah because the different standard of judgment David was applying to others than he was applying to himself. When you look inward, my brother, you will see yourself who you really are. Verse 7, and Nathan said to David, Thou art a man. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. No, 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 no. If God were to connect a screen, hmm? to your thoughts, to your mind, and broadcast live on Facebook, Here. The 
brokers a TV and brokers what you are thinking, what your, what, what your thoughts are. That's why you need to do a lot of introspection. When you look in one, you will see God. Because the mirror of God is within you. Number three, look, looking around. Looking around. We don't, Christians don't look around anymore. When you look around, you will see where you are. Where you really are. You see sinners. And you see the propensity for a great harvest. We don't do that anymore. We don't. You will see the great opportunity God has given you for fulfilling the great commission. But we don't. Well, we don't look around. If you unleash the power of your gaze around you, you will see what is the mind of God every day. What can you see around you? Are you seeing men wearing sick clothes? Nice suits, living in high ceiling, high houses and apartments, riding exotic cars. Is that what you see? Or do you see people who are hurtling towards a climax? Sinners hurtling towards destruction. The litmus test is of is who or which of your friends is still outside the kingdom. That you have shared your faith with recently. When you are comfortable, when you understand a friend of yours, a friend of yours who is not in the faith, you have a problem, brother and sister. You have a problem, big Buhara. When you are comfortable with them, uh, let me tell you the truth. God is my witness. Let me tell you the truth. They will accuse you in eternity. Write it down. They will accuse you in eternity if you don't share your faith with them. Why? Because when they begin to burn forever, you will point me on what you think. No. You will say, if you knew, why didn't you drag me to church? Look, there's no, if, this morning, if you woke up at 7 a.m., have your shower, take a good bath. And yesterday you told that friend that, come on, today, I'm coming to take you to church. On me. And after church, I'm going to give you lunch. Name the place. You drive to his house. You tell the wife, you tell the man. You drive to his house. You say to him, I'm taking you to church. I've come to carry you. I'm your chauffeur today. Look, that's what we used to do in the full gospel. That's what we used to do. Our premier hotel Bible study Monday is at 5.30. We leave our offices at four for your office. There, we have we have said we just come just come and greet you. Four p.m. on a Monday, we we'll come and greet you. Greet God. Greet me. You know you are closing at five. We we'll sit in your office till five because we told you last week that you are coming. You are, you are coming with us to church. You didn't come. When it is five, you close. We say, you know what? My car is outside. You can leave your car here. I'm driving you to Premier Hotel. Premier Hotel. You know, it is not an accident that you are near Premier Hotel. It's not an accident. When you tell anybody you are taking them to a place near Premier Hotel, their imagination is that it's a nice place. Because Premier is, is a nice place. Is this place not nice? It's nice. It's fit for kings. When you drive them here, you have done your beats. Leave God to do the rest. Otherwise, they will blame you in eternity. They are those of your friends. When you bring them to Christ, they are the ones that will account for the stars on your crown in heaven. I know you are saved, but may you not get to heaven and have a bland crown. No star. When you are say, ah, hello, just one of those people. God saved and did nothing. Most small boys will be just mouthing you there. You'll be happy that you are in heaven, but you'll be sad that you didn't do what God put in your hand to do. When you look around, you will see what aches the mind of God. You do not have that bland crown. You do not have a crown that stars. You know, you see the world that is hurting towards a climax. 
Do you see end time events played out, being played out to your, your very presence every day that you wake up? Be comfortable with those who do not know Christ around you because they will accuse you of eternity. But all you can do is to go to their homes and bring them, bring them to church. Number four, looking forward. Looking forward. Looking forward. Looking forward will tell you about where you are heading, where you are going. When you are looking your days, looking forward, you will see God in your future. God is always there. God is always there. Seeing God ahead requires faith. You want to make a success of your life, you need to look forward and see God in that future. When you see God in your future, it brings hope for tomorrow. Seeing God ahead requires faith. It brings hope for tomorrow. Looking forward. It's a look of faith. It's a look of expectancy to a future of living in God, with God in his home. You are living with God in his home. When you are looking forward, you are looking forward to heaven. There's a heaven to gain. There's a heaven to gain. Philippians 3 from verse 20. Philippians 3 from verse 20. Philippians 3 from verse 20. It's for our conversation. In other words, what we talk about, our conversation, for our conversation is in heaven. What we talk about is, is heavenly impact. For whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. My friend, we are first here. You are a tourist here. No matter how long you live, you are a tourist here on earth. There is a place you are returning to from whence God created you. There is a heaven to me. You are a tourist here. You know, when you go on holidays and you get, go to a good hotel and everything there is nice and the food is good, the rooms are clean, everything is fine. You press the bell, they come and serve you as well. You don't remain there forever. Because when your when your when your when your time, when your payment is ended, they will chase you out. They will chase you out. They will tell you to go back. The same thing here on earth. Your time span. Limited. Your time span is limited. Your time span here is limited. When we go, there's a heaven to gain. The traverse of this harsh world will be well worth it when you get to be with him. You will see the soon coming king when you look forward. You will see that Jesus is coming back. You will be willing to walk while it is there when you see that. Hallelujah. Number five, and lastly, look, looking up. Looking up. Where you must turn your gaze. You must look up. You must look up. You must unleash your gaze upward. When you are alone, when everything appears to have abandoned you, you must unleash that gaze, looking upward. When you are in desperate situations, you must unleash that gaze looking upward. As you navigate the difficult course of life, you must unleash your gaze looking upwards. Look up to God in prayers. Remember the same David. Why did you think he survived that crash, that Sheba? Because David was always looking up to God. David knew the importance of worship, regardless of his situation. He always took time to talk with God. In times of great joy, he prayed to God. In times of sin, he cried before God. When Nathan spoke to him that he was a man, he didn't say, hands. so what? He repented immediately. He went back to God. Always looking up to God. Worship team, please return to your beat. And when he was lonely, he turned to God. Regardless of his emotional or physical state, David was a man who sought God. 
Therefore, it is not surprising that we find him building an altar to God for worship and pray. My friend, look to God. Look to him for instructions. Look up to God for directions. Look to God for encouragement. Look up to God for strength. When you are weak and you almost want to give up, look to God. Look up to God. As a man who is 70 today, hmm, let me tell you, when you say man who is 70, thank God for his life. Because this mortal world in which we are, Wahala deal, to survive 70 years with Wahala is God based. That's why Yoruba will tell you. I like Yoruba a lot too. Hmm? They have proverbs. He said, when you see a man's eye sunken, it's because he has seen. Hmm? I can't translate it very well to English. I can only try. He has seen. When you look to God, you understand and remember the awesomeness of God. Despite the wahala of life. That's why Romans in chapter 1, verse 20. I want to read from the New Living Translation. Romans 1, in verse 20. In the New Living Translation. It says, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. You have no excuse. When you look up, you will know God. You see God. Then you can trust God for your protection. When you look up to God, you can trust Him for your provision. Look up to God this morning, my friend. For your help comes from the Lord as you look towards the hill. When you choose to unleash the power of your days, you will determine how things will turn out for you. You know, many of you remember the leaders, there was this particular discipleship lesson that and I, I was going to teach them on a particular discipleship lesson and I asked them to come to the window here, all of them in the children's church we all went to the window and I said look look up from the window and tell me what you saw some people saw grass actually most people saw grass, they saw a tidy place where our dust bin is they saw a few people when you choose to look, we determine how things end up. There are two prisoners in the same prison cell. But it's not, it's not a tiny window was there. One of the prisoners will always climb up to look through that window. So the other prisoner said, Ah, Obani, what are you always looking at? He said, Ah, glorious sunshine. Balls in the air. One day, I'll be as free as they are. He made it. The other one did not make it. My brother and sister, remember that you have God to look up to. Let me tell you, the senior brother of the prodigal son caused more heartache for the father than the prodigal son himself. You know, the senior brother, the father didn't know the perception he had of him. When you look to God, when you look up to God, what kind of God do you see? The one that the senior brother saw, one that will just use you and not reward you, a one that you can arise and go back to. When the son said, I will arise and go back to my father and say to him, I'm not worthy to be your, to be your son. Make me as a servant. Beyond the heels of God is a caring lawgiver. God is a caring God. If you look to him, you will find him. If you choose to look to him, you will find him. Let's stand together as we read from Psalm 121 because we'll be singing that song now. Psalm 121 I want us to read that entire psalm together. Just a few verses. Just eight verses. But not now. What are we read? Are you there now? It's on page 893. And I'm sure it will be protected. Don't no, put NLT, put AJV. AJV, I'm going to ask. It's AJV. Now let's read together. One, two, go. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. 
My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel, she neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out by coming in. From this time forth and even forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's sing that song together and we lift up my eyes to the hills. I will lift up my eyes to the hills for my soul and my life. ministry of Jesus his gaze was always 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 upon the father no matter the pain he was going through no matter the punishment that the Jews were throwing at him he made a success of his ministry because his gaze was always 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 upon the father if you do the same you will get the same results you make Jesus your focus make the Lord God Almighty your focus look up to him Get this result. The longest night of his assignment here on earth, when the greatest sadness was awaiting him, the sadness that must of necessity be seen as the hilarious joy, joy unspeakable, gathered his disciples together, gathered them together to an upper room like this, and he connected those disciples to a kingdom he alone could see at that time kingdom of God. Looking up, he did. Giving thanks to God. Despite the pain that was about to be unleashed upon him. He gave thanks to God for the elements, the tokens of the new covenant. 
Once they partook of that covenant, that token, Jesus was persuaded that even though there was going to be a scattering, there will be a gathering together again. He was sure that once they partook of the body of Jesus and his blood, they will continually look up to God. And that's what happened. Things turned for the worse. They were scattered. Even one of them denied that I mean Jesus. Caused everything about him. But after the resurrection, came back. Same thing will happen this morning. So I've come to the lost table. As you partake of this, it's going to be for you a wonderful opportunity to look up to God. A wonderful privilege to look up to the Master. On the night that Christ was to be betrayed, and if you are at home, you are representing your family, or you are in any of the auditorium this morning, whatever you do, I need you to stand in as a priest and you also. On the night he was to be betrayed, he gathered those disciples together into the upper room. He took the bread. I leave this up to you, our Father, this morning. A thanksgiving of what you got for us. I uh, do ask that your blessings will rest upon this bread and everyone be lifted upon to you this morning. In obedience of your instructions unto us, let your blessings fall upon the loaves in my hand. In the hand of everyone representing the priest this morning. Whether in the diaspora, Place of refuge in the various auditorium. I would say when the Lord Jesus Christ had given thanks and blessed the bread, he broke it. I break this bread this morning in symbolism of what Jesus did. And as an affirmation of the fact that as we partake of it, our bodies, our aspirations, our dreams shall never be broken. I would say after supper, he took the cup. I take this cup this morning along with those that have been poured out, every single one of them, both in the place of refuge and in the various homes of your people are gathered together this morning in celebration of the Lord Jesus. I leave this cup unto you as every one single cup is lifted this morning, the content thereon. I do pray, Lord, that your blessings also will rest upon the content of this cup. I will give unto us the mystery of heaven, the blood of Jesus, which is shed for us. Let it be, O God, a newness of life unto us that will transform our mortal being, removing the, dis the, the, the distractions of focus and making us to be able to revert our focus upon you and you alone. Help us, King of glory, by your grace. Like you did to the disciples of old, do to our lives also. Because that even though there may be a scattering, there will be a gathering together again. I will say that to bless the cup gave to the disciples, he said unto them, Drink ye all of it. As often as you drink it, do show the Lord's death till it comes again. So we see this morning, King of Glory, the tokens of our covenant, the body of Jesus, which is broken for us. And the blood of Jesus, which is shed for us. I ask you this morning to draw near with faith. I take of faith. But first of all, we will call Brother Aki Olushi and Sister Lola Olushi to come and to administer communion personally. Jesus, which is broken for you. This is the blood of Jesus, which is shed for you. This is the blood of Jesus, which is shed for you. We just stand here until we all receive so we can all drink together as one big family.
body of Jesus. Body of Jesus. I need to know what's happening in the auditoriums that we all served. I need to know what shall be quickly.
name of Jesus is when I am high on my way. There is more than a name. It's a name that's full of power and grace. Oh, the name. sing that name this morning is that in our hands tokens of a covenant of life that we have with him tokens bought for us and purchased on the night he was betrayed before he was taken to Calvary so we have proof proofs now this morning of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth more than 2,000 years that sacrifice so he says we should show his death till he comes again. We should proclaim his death till he comes again. And that's what we're about to do. So because we believe what I'm about to say, say it convincingly. So say after me, say Heavenly Father. Say with conviction, Heavenly Father. I come to you this morning. Body, soul, and spirit. I obey you all around that is my name. And I stand on my behalf this morning. I stand on the behalf of my wife, also. On my children, Ulufemi, Bulutifet, Tuluwa, and Italoluwa, I compare with my mouth because I believe in my heart that we belong to Jesus. We believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That punishment was laid upon Him for our iniquities. He died for our sins. And He rose again to life that we may have the newness of life. We claim this newness of life, each of us this morning, as the reward of this punishment. Therefore, we declare and declare that we are free from sin. We are free from the shackles of sin. We are free from the consequences of sin. 
I will have I have in my hand as I stand in my own behalf and on behalf of the ones I have mentioned the body of Jesus which is broken for me the body of Jesus which is broken for them but the reason of the broken body my body and their body will not be broken in the month of August or the month to follow we are free from sicknesses, we are free from diseases, we are free from ailments, we are free from every shackle of evil in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because by the stripes on the back of Jesus, we have been healed. So we claim our healing for August. But the Bible says, healing is the children's bread. So we claim our healing for the month of August. We shall not be kindness for any hospital. We shall not be kindness for any sick bed. No disease will come near us. And no pandemic will alight upon us. By the reason of the strength on the strength of Jesus, the stuff he took on his back, we have been healed. We have found that this morning. And we give God praise for it. We have in our hand also the blood of Jesus, which is shed for us. The blood has been shed. Therefore, the remission for the, the sins of man has come. We receive remission for every sin. The one we have committed. The one we are committing and the one we will commit. There is a remission by this blood for the sin of man. Therefore we receive remission for our sins this morning. And the Bible says, this blood blows out any ordinance of handwriting written against us and takes them out of our ways. Therefore, by the reason of the shed blood of Jesus, every plan of the devil for the month of August 2020, every will of the evil one, every judgment written against us, Fire in the spiritual to detonate in the mouth of the months to come. By the reason of the blood of Jesus, we command that they blotted out and taken out of our ways in the holy name of Jesus Christ. We are free from their consequences, we are free from their requirements in the holy name of Jesus Christ. We proclaim liberty, we proclaim freedom by the reason of the blood of Jesus to shed for us. And by the reason of this blood, the reason of this body also. We have in our hands this morning the tokens of a new covenant in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we have found this morning that the covenant of protection for the month of August and the month to come upon our lives is sure and is assured. We claim the provision of the covenant of protection this morning. Anywhere we go, we are protected by the power of the Most High in the month of August and the month to follow. In the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the reason and purpose of this covenant, we have found also that the covenant of provision, the month of August and the month to come, by the same reason, we are light upon us. We see that covenant of provision, the daily allocation for, for August, we receive this morning. Every single moment of every single day, the allocation of provision for the month of August and the month to come will be our portion. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the reason of this tokens also, we have the covenant of life with God. We shall live, we shall not die. None of us will be missing. None of us will be missing because we have the covenant of life with God. No matter what the enemy plans, to, today the blood, the power in the name of the Lord Jesus takes it out of our ways and we walk upon our habits. So Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the covenant of life the covenant of protection and the covenant of provision. We have in our hands the body of Jesus and the shepherd of Jesus. We receive this with thanksgiving this morning, knowing that as we go into August, we go as conquerors to this month. So every obstacle in August, we command you to bow in Jesus' name. You have said in your word that every one will bow, every knee will bow to you, and every tongue will confess and, and confess allegiance unto you. So Lord, by the power of your name, Circumstances of August, we align with your purpose of our lives. Thank you that you've had us. For Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. With that confidence, it's the broken body of Jesus, which is broken for you, that your body may never be broken, and the shed blood of Jesus is shed for you, that you may have a for your sins. And victory everywhere you go.
Yeah, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come at your table this morning. Thank you for the grace that is available in Christ Jesus. And for the covenant that we have enacted with you. We thank you, Lord, that no matter the obstacles of life, no matter the scattering that the enemy may bring, the storms of life, you know at your feet we will gather again. None of us shall be missing. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank for the day that is ahead of us to remain a wonderful and a great day in retrospect. And thank you for the month ahead of us. We remember this month as a month where you did us good. Thank you, mighty God, because as we go into our month, we go knowing that the God of heaven, as we look up unto you, you will always be ahead of us. To make every crooked part of the streets, to bring down every mountain and fill up every valley. That God will thank you that in alignment with your purpose, and therefore great grace shall attend unto us. In this month, Lord, we we'll see you visit us in that in spectacular dimension. It says a month of continual celebration. Let it be so, our Father Lord. The precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you. I appreciate you. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace and fellowship. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we want to thank you for viewing those of you who watch online. But if you want to watch our celebration, I'm going to celebrate now. To we'll still be on our Facebook page, look for the title Archaeology at 70. You can follow us live on our Facebook page even as we close this segment of the meeting this morning. So, we have your seats. We'll, in a short time, begin our celebration of our brother's 70th birthday. We believe that you have enjoyed this service with us and we hope that you will join us this same time next week. For any inquiry and prayer request, you can contact us through the various channels displayed on the screen. Thank you and God bless you.